This is Mario with me on Microflight. And in this particular video, I am going to talk about the uh, orange uh, transmitter. Uh, let me first uh, start by saying that uh, I bought this transmitter when it first uh, was released. So I've had it that, that long uh, of a time. I've used this transmitter probably a lot more than a, a typical uh, radio control enthusiast. Uh, might be using this radio and it's because I design test and fly models uh, for a living uh, so I'm, I'm constantly using this and testing and flying uh, models of all so sorts and types you know with uh, uh, via radio control so prior to this radio you know I come from the uh, the line of uh, radios that uh, were manufactured back in the uh, 70s 80s the Futaba the Airtronics GR radios so I've had some very, very nice radios in the past, but with the uh, changes in technology and, and just things getting more compact and, and cheaper, uh, I decided to purchase this, this unit here. Uh, and also because it had some of the features that I was already using with the uh, DX6i Spectrum line, some of the transmitters that, uh, receivers that I was using uh, with, with the DX6i. So when this radio came out, it was a nice uh, uh, option to uh, use the same uh, receivers, be a uh, DSM-2, uh, um, and, uh, and it was much cheaper than the DX6i. The other great uh, thing about this particular transmitter as compared to the DX6i, which it replaced eventually, was that it had, uh, is that it has, you know, some, uh, uh, some nice uh, additional uh, uh, programming features. Um, it's a lot easier to use. It's a lot more ergonomic than the DX6i. It's got a better grip than the DX6i, and so there's a lot of a lot of nice little little things that made this radio my my favorite radio. Besides the price tag, which is also very inexpensive at $69, I think it is that, that you can purchase this. Plus the shipping, of course, it'll probably end up being about a hundred dollars, a lot cheaper than the DX6i and anything similar, to, you know, to this particular. Um, uh, type of uh, transmitter. So, from an average user standpoint, this, great, this radio is great. Um, you know, from a professional standpoint, uh, like I said, I design in, uh, in, in fly and test and, in, and upgrade uh, products, you know, radio control products for a living. So I guess I'm what you would call a professional in that field. So for me, this radio has worked extremely well. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about this, this radio. I really, really liked it. And I wasn't wrong when I first saw this radio and I started looking at some of these features. The only thing that I wish this radio would have is a couple potentiometers, maybe at least one potentiometer that would allow the user the, the option to, uh, to have a, a variable uh, control on one of the channels. And the reason I'm saying this is because I've been using this radio also for my radio control RC Auto Gyros. And, to, uh, and lately I develop a, um, a pre-rotator of my own. Okay, so the uh, potentiometer on this transmitter would be a great feature to have for setting up your pre-rotator, and that's the only thing that I would add to this particular radio if, if I was designing uh, th this radio or making some uh, updates to, to this radio. Um, I am going to be sending this video to Hobby King, and hopefully they'll, they'll pay it, uh, a little bit of attention to what I'm saying here on this radio. Uh, once again, it's been a great radio. But let me share a little, a little story. What happened uh, yesterday as, as I was trying to fly this with my auto gyros. Now, understand that this radio, I've had it for years. It's been my trusty radio. Nothing wrong with the radio. I did fix the, the antenna a couple of times, and that's the reason why you see this, this setup here. This is my own antenna. It had the longer uh, stem here, and that broke. When that broke, I just simply shortened the, uh, the length of the the, the plastic parts, I didn't shorten the antenna. The antenna is still intact at the same length. So I didn't change the, the, the antenna's uh, length, just the plastic parts so that this would be a little more compact and so that it would have a, a less uh, uh, risk of uh, breaking. It's still bendable. I have a heat shrink tubing here. And this was flexing just fine, you know, without the heat shrink tubing, but this is something that I did last night. And the reason I'll explain in a little while here. So while I was trying to fly my model uh, the day before, uh, it was flying fine two days prior to that. And then uh, two days uh, ago, I went out to the field and my models started to crash. 
So something was glitching. And uh, I brought home the radio. You know, typically I work at night. And so I do these things that, you know, very late at, uh, you know, 3, 2 in the morning, uh, 4 in the morning sometimes. And, and so I'm, I'm very tired when I do this. And, and it's a bad time. I, I just have to learn, you know, to, to be extra careful when I, when I work at, at night and do repairs because at nighttime you're exhausted, you're tired, and sometimes you don't pay close attention to what you're doing. My fault, I took the radio apart two, two days ago and uh, looked at the antenna and I, and I noticed that the antenna wire at the connection to the, you know, I'll open the, the transmitter here so that you can see what I'm talking about. And there's also a reason why I have this taped. And I'll go into that in a little while here as well. But I have to show this video because it's just unbelievable you know what eventually happened and viewers have to have to understand this and they have to see what what I'm going to be showing in this video so let me un untape this and like I said I'll explain that in a little while but actually if you look inside the transmitter you know you have a you have this module here you have this board that just sits on, on some pins that are attached to this other board you know they, they plug right in this module right here is your an antenna um, basically your receiver or, or transmitter module that has to be connected properly to the antenna. Now, like I said, the antenna has a certain length. It's a coaxial antenna. A coaxial antenna means that it has an, an inner uh, wire and also it has a sheathing over that, and it's, and it's a very, very thin antenna. So while I was doing this two nights ago, repairing this, because one of these leads had, had broken loose, I accidentally grounded actually ended up soldering both the uh, the inner and the uh, the sheathing the you know the inner uh, wire as well as with the sheathing and so my range had uh, a very uh, limited uh, distance without realizing that I went to fly yesterday and my models kept crashing two models that I crashed I was so upset it was hot I was trying to get some video with my with my wife she had the camera we had everything set up uh, you know, it's very hard to film videos, do these videos, and, and I was just trying to test my pre-rotators a little further, and without realizing that the previous night, you know, I had done this, this fix, and without range testing it, which is what I should have done originally with, before flying the models, I went ahead and, and tried to fly my models. So the first one crashed, and I go, what, what, something's going on. And sometimes you, you have to, you know, have to, you have to quit when these things happen, but I really wanted to, to get some video and I took my other model, went and tried it, the same thing happened. Fortunately, the second model, I was, it was in the ground and, and in very little, uh, little damage to it. So I was so upset and I took the radio and I threw it against the, you know, the, the area that I fly in, this is mostly rocks and, and pebbles and very, very rough terrain. And I threw the radio with all my might towards the ground. I was so upset. Typically, I, I keep my cool, but I just lost it at that point. I was tired, like I said. I've been working on, on my models very hard. And it's very disappointing when, when things don't work. And I was just exhausted and tired. And I took the radio and I swung it towards the ground. You know, I basically wanted to kill this, this radio. Not that it was the radio's fault. That I didn't know at that time. But things were not working for me. And I threw the radio up against the ground. I went home, I took the radio in pieces, and this is one of the reasons why these other pieces are also here on the, on the table. It's because, you know, these are the pieces that broke. As hard as I threw the radio, it is unbelievable that this radio survived. I brought it home, I took a break. I didn't touch this for, you know, uh, for, for, uh, for a good amount of time. And at nighttime, I decided, well, let's look at the pieces. Let's, let, let, let's see what, what, what happened. Basically, this came loose. These wires popped right out. And so I picked th these two sections up. The potentiometers here broke loose from the, uh, the casings. Um, basically, that was it. All these, all these posts that retained the screws you know, for, for the cover broke. No problem. So I decided, well, let, let's see, let's put the batteries. I lost two batteries in the process, so I just replaced those two batteries with uh, freshly charged batteries, and I put the, the radio back on. The uh, screen display, as you can see it here, still operational. That is a little bit loose there, so I, I pushed that back on. And 
nothing to the gimbals. I don't know if, it, if it's the way I threw it. I grabbed the radio and I threw it up against the ground like this. I don't see any damage here, but I do see that the model hit this area here. That switch still, believe it or not, it's still operational. The only switch that's kind of a little hard to operate is this one here. Other than that, the radio is perfectly fine. I mean, I, I was expecting the case to break in pieces as hard as I threw it. But as you can see it, nothing to the case. And I'm not making this up. I wish my wife would have caught the video on, the, on this camera that I'm filming here on the Nikon. Unfortunately, we don't have it. I was so upset. I guess she was, you know, she was, uh, she was afraid that uh, I might lash out at her. Uh, I mean, I was extremely upset. You have no idea how I was, I, upset I was. That my, you know, I crashed two of my models and these things were not working. I was tired and I was trying to get these videos uh, it, it just to, you, you know, to, uh, to, to fully, fully test my, my pre-rotators, uh, um, uh, pre which they work fine. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just that I was trying to get extra videos for some of my customers so that I can show it to them and make sure that they are, uh, that that's, you know, what they, they want. And so that this ended up, ended up happening. So when I opened up the radio and I started putting the pieces together, I noticed I went back and I retraced my steps on the antenna and I noticed that the antenna was my culprit this antenna was not wired properly. And you have to be careful when you, when you do these things, especially with antennas, because if you, uh, if you fix an antenna, if you don't connect the, 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 the antenna wires to the pr proper locations on the transmitter, you know, you're, you're going to, uh, you're gonna basically risk your model and, and uh, you know, diminish the range sometimes. But, uh, so I went online and I, I looked up and see, you know, um, I, I looked and, and see if anybody had uh, done a similar fix to the, the transmitter and I found a, a thread in RC groups that discussed about the uh, resoldering of the antenna. Put everything back together. Of course, I don't have the posts, you know, the, the, uh, the posts that, that hold it back together. So that's the purpose for the tape. This antenna right here that, that I replaced at a previous time, uh, you know, broke. This is the reason why I have these two little screws here that, that, that allow this to pivot. And I glued this to make sure that this will not pivot on me again. And the only pivoting that, that this is doing is forward because that's, you know, you, you want that antenna, you want the range of the antenna, the effective radiated power sometimes to be, uh, to be horizontal as you're flying your model. So, you know, sometimes this provides that kind of uh, radiated power like that. So that's the reason why these antennas are done that way is to create a hor more horizontal, um, uh, more horizontal uh, uh, path. So, you know, I ended up uh, putting this uh, heat shrink tubing over that just to hold it better. And believe it or not, I cannot believe, I cannot believe as hard as I threw this radio on the ground with the intent to, with the intent to d demolish it. I was so upset and I ended up taking it out on the radio. Well, as you can see here, the model, the, the radio still works. Um, model still works and that's the reason for the tape. The tape here, there's, you know, I'm not going to bother, you know, making provisions for, uh, to fix the, the posts here. I'm just taping this right here and I'm going to try this radio again. This time I am going to uh, go to the field and do a range test before I fly my models just in case. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that this was the culprit, uh, the antenna, because when I looked at the antenna, the way I had, you know, soldered it, I had, you know, it was late at night and not, I, I just couldn't see right and my, my eyesight is, is not what it used to be when I was, you know, 18. So... All those are contributing factors, you know, contributed, not testing it after. Let this video be, uh, uh, you know, uh, an example or, or some help for some people. And also let this be, let this be um, proof of how well this transmitter is, has been designed and, and, and manufactured. I mean, the plastic is, I know it's ABS. ABS is very hard to, uh, to, uh, uh, to break sometimes. Um, it's, it's a form of uh, styrene, modified styrene. Uh, ABS is mainly used sometimes for uh, pipes, you know, sewer pipes. And the reason they use the ABS is because in sewers you have, uh, you know, rats and they, they tend to bite at things and, you know, you, you want, a, you want a, a plastic that's going to resist, you know, that they'll be, be tough as nails. So tough as nails is radio. I mean, I, I can't say enough about this radio. Kudos to, to Javi King and or whoever came up with this, this particular design. Uh, I wish I would have that video where I threw this radio because I, I once again, I cannot stress the, the how 
enraged I, I was, and I threw this radio up against the ground. I mean, I, I, I was so upset. Uh, and look at that, nothing, nothing major happened. One switch, this switch, I can still operate this if I push down, it's a little hard. Uh, the potentiometers, like I said, came off of from, the, from the casing. I, I put those back and I flipped over the little tabs that hold up the potentiometer, the resistive uh, material. Two of them here. This, this right here, the trim, I had to redo the, uh, the little tabs that push onto the uh, surface mount uh, switches on the, on the board. Um, and uh, other than that, I mean, it's, it's, it's still working. I tested all the features, you know, the, it, it, uh, on my table here. And I'm, I'm dying to go back to the field and test and do the, the, the final test, which if, if it works, is, is, is I think it, it will work because of, you know, because of this antenna issue. Now the antenna is connected properly, but I will do a range test and I will fly my models. And, you know, once again, this radio has not let me down. And I don't think this, this radio wanted to, wanted to die just yet, at least not in my hands. And so thank you, uh, Javi King. Uh, thanks to the to those who, who made this radio. And if you can just add a little potentiometer to this, this radio, more power, keep it simple, increase the cost by whatever that potentiometer costs uh, uh, to add it to, 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 the, to, the, to this transmitter, and keep these radios. I love these radios, I can't say enough, and I hope this video uh, uh, you know, is, uh, is, is proof of all these things that I'm talking about, and, and just more in support of this transmitter. So that's my story with this transmitter, and uh, just to give you an idea of the uh, uh, of the type of models that I fly with this radio, you know, you can go to my YouTube channel and just see that I, I you know, it, it would make, it would take a long list to list all the stuff that I've, I've used with this transmitter. I mean, I fly models from uh, indoor indoor models to uh, you know real big quarter scale models, and this radio has not let me down. The antenna. Uh, oh, the other the other thing, if 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 you guys that designed this radio could embed the antenna somehow into the transmitter, like you do some of your 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 other transmitter by Turnigy, I think it, it is, they embed it into the handle. Do that. Get rid of the the antenna that that uh, that risk factor that that might break and might might just force uh, the the user to to fix the antenna. It might risk you know the the uh, losing uh, range or getting something uh, wrong connected in in that process. So if you can get rid of that, keep the transmitter, keep the same, keep the orange. That that is a trademark, uh, and I don't care what anybody says about the uh, you know the, this radio being cheap. I am proof. My models are proof. This video is proof of the uh, of the of the of the quality and and the uh, and the longevity that this radio has has provided for the price. I've you know f for my use the way I've used this radio this radio has paid itself ten times over so I can't say enough about this and I hope this video transmits all this all this excitement that I'm I'm having with uh, just by by having gone through through all these things that I have gone with this radio from good times to bad times and and, and now to this uh, to this point so this is uh, Mario with me a microflight again and. Uh, I'm really excited. This radio did not die. It's you know, uh, as hard as I, I as hard as I threw it, unbelievable. Thanks for watching. It's just unbelievable the way this transmitter is performing after. I don't have my my easy 1.25 with the pre-rotator because that one crashed yesterday due to a transmitter uh, antenna issue I had. I tried to fix the antenna on my Hobby King transmitter and I did a, a full video on what happened uh, with, with that issue and why I crashed my, that model. So I didn't bring that today, but I got this one back in, in line here the post crack so this is the reason for this little part here another beautiful day we would have had some great video yesterday on the Nikon but uh, things did not go well because I had issues with the antenna on the transmitter the antenna broke loose and I tried to solder that back at late at night and I, I did it incorrectly came back here I had very li limited range and when the model the model took off just fine with a pre-rotator and when I got it uh, far enough you know that just the transmitter cannot keep up with that with that distance so I ended up trashing my model
buah I'm gonna try to recreate kind of simulate what I did here with this transmitter and my, my other video explains all this and I and I talk about this thing but I took it out on the unfortunately on the on the poor transmitter and it wasn't the transmitter it was my the way I had attached the antenna it was it was providing limited range and it was making my models crash but I took the transmitter and I swung it with all my might like this as, as, as I'm showing it in this video I'm recreating this because I don't unfortunately I don't have that video my wife can ca capture that video and I didn't have my camera on at that time so I took the transmitter I swung it against the ground and it basically broke apart in pieces believe it or not this is the same transmitter that I fixed watch my other video it's very cool <laughs> it's just it's just amazing the way this this thing survived now I did lose two batteries two rechargeable batteries here in the process so we'll have to we'll have to come back and scout this area a little better here I would like to keep those batteries because they were brand new I would like to find those batteries because they were brand new but anyway we're gonna just do the video it's another hot day considering it's October here in Arizona it's still hot so I'm gonna try to get my my wife is operating the camera oh here's here's the battery look at that So he is maneuvering in rough terrain. We're out in the desert here. So the ground is rocky and so I guess the long range testing is working.